building the scan from sinusitis purpose. This purely for the tumor purpose. Now, see to begin with anteriorly in the nasal cavity. See, no tumor so far, no tumor. The first appearance of the tumor is this level. So now, this gives you the idea that once you put the endoscope, where you are going to come across the tumor. This tumor, you are going to find at the level of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. Okay? Now, why I am saying this? Had you find the tumor at the beginning, at the interior end of the nasal cavity, hmm, it's difficult to remove the endoscopic end. The reason being, the concept of endoscopic removal of this tumor is not to fiddle into the tumor. It's very, very vascular. We'll remove it like a polyp without any bleeding. Reason being, we'll go around the tumor. We'll dissect it through its periosteal attachment. We'll cut off its blood supply, the spinopalatine artery and other vessels. We are, at any point of time, never going to fiddle into the tumor. Now, if the tumor is very, very anterior, what will happen? To access the vascularity and the other attachment, you'll have to remove the tumor. The moment you start removing the tumor, it's going to bleed like anything. So the too much of anterior nasal extension is a relative open, contraindication. Then you do it with open. Relative contra, it's not absolute. What I do, I can do it because I have done. Then I would remove with a coagulator. Slowly, slowly, coagulator is a slow cutting tool, tool, not like debrider. And it's a fibrous nature, so it cannot come with a debrider, it will bleed like anything. So in that situation, you slowly, slowly Later, you shrink bloodless category relatively. You can coagulate at the same time with the coagulator. So slowly, slowly, you can take it behind and then get good nasal space. So this is one thing you need to see where the tumor is starting on the coronal section. Second thing is, look from here when you are going behind, where it can go. It can go, it has a propensity to spread to certain area. It's not like the angiopharmaca can grow anywhere. It's not like it arises from the spinopalatine foramen, lip of the spinopalatine foramen. Then it has a tendency to go laterally as well as medially, both sides. It is growing medially into the nasal cavity, then going in the nasopharynx. Laterally, see, it is going in the telgopalatine fossa. Mm -hmm. See, in the telgopalatine. On non contrast, you cannot differentiate from the muscles and anything. You just see the opacity. So, non contrast doesn't can carry any value beyond this. Now, come to the contrast point. See in the coronal one. We are seeing one by one. So now, with the coroner, this tumor, we are here. Now see the tumor. Differentiate it from the normal structure. See, this is temporalis muscle. This is your mandibular condyle. Uh, remus. remus. This is temporalis muscle coming to the coronoid process. This is the lateral pterygoid muscle. Hmm? And see this contrast enhanced tumor. Tumor takes contrast. It's a contrast scan. Can you see the tumor enhancing? Yes. This is the tumor in the pericopalatine fossa. Enhancing. And see there is a good plane. See there is a good plane of between the tumor and the normal muscle. So now from this scan. You play in a beach cup. Really, but then we have pterygoid muscle, lateral pterygoid muscle. Very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. 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 Very where it is going. So this is our limit and see the line of the maxilla, maxillary entrum, maxillary entrum. It's not going in the infratemporal fossa at all. Can you see the lateral limit? So it is going up to the lateral limit of the pterygopalatine fossa but not beyond laterally into the infratemporal fossa. From here it can go in the infratemporal fossa but this tumor is not going. This is pterygomaxillary fissure. Yes. This is pterygomaxillary fissure. It's not going beyond that. Hmm. Now, we are going from anterior to posterior. So, maxillary sinus, behind that is pterygopalatine fossa. Now, behind what is going to come? This is pterygoid process. So, pterygoid process is not eroded. Hmm. See, it is pretty intact. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty intact. It's not going behind that. Now, if this, had this tumor been going behind the pterygoid process, behind the pterygoid process is parapharyngeal space. Know where this tumor is going behind the pterygoid process because pterygoid process is intact. In that situation, it erodes the pterygoid process and go behind. The next case, 
as a pure parapharyngeal extension. That's a revision case. And this is the component in the nasopharynx. No. no going in the sphenoid sinus at all. Though it is reaching up to the floor of the sphenoid, eroding the floor, but not going inside. Okay. Now the approach to this tumor is the first approach is go lateral to the tumor and clamp the sphenopalatine artery. मीडियल टू दैंडल यहाँ से जाती है ओवर दैटर टेरिगो रन इन दॉरिजोटल प्लेन लाइक दिस टू एंटर इन टू दैनोपेलेटाइन फॉर्म This artery is the main source of supply to this. Mm. To cut out the supply, we have to first endoscopically go lateral to the tumor. We'll open up the uh, this uh, tergopalatine fossa mm -hmm. by removing the posterior wall of the maxilla. Because of the tumor first mass, it is thinned out. No, first you remove the medial wall of the maxilla. maxilla. To then access this, the wall of the to maxilla. access this, then remove the posterior wall of the maxilla. Just expose the tumor. Just pull it little bit. You will see the plane here, lateral extension, and here you will get the spinopalatine. You will see. You clamp this, your most majority of the vascularity of this tumor will go away. The first step would be to like it. Now, had this been going here, we will remove the lateral wall of the maxilla as well endoscopically and reach here and retract the tumor and see the artery and clamp it. The approach would have been same wherever it is going. It is always going to push the sphenopalatine. Then we have to go beyond the tumor. Beyond the lateral to the artery, lateral to the tumor. Tumor, tumor, and then clamp the artery. तो कॉरोनल में तो ये देखना है सर नाउ कमिंग टू द एक्शन एक्शन इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन कॉरोनल फॉर दिस ट्यूमर ना व्हाट यू हैव टू सी इज दिस ट्यूमर द मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द ट्यूमर बिगिन व्हेन इट इन्फिल्ट्रेट्स द टेरिगोपेलेटाइन फोसा एज लॉन्ग एज इट इज लिमिटेड अराइजिंग एट द स्पेनोपेलेटाइन फोरामेन इट गोस फर्स्ट इन टू द नेजल कैविटी पोस्टियर पार्ट एंड नेजोफेरिक्स इट डजेंट गो एनी वेयर इट मे गो इन टू द नेजोफेरिक्स और इन टू द स्पिनोइड साइनस और पोस्टिथमोइड साइनस बट डजेंट गो बियॉन्ड दैट द मूवमेंट इज स्प्रेड्स लैटरली इन टू द टेरिगोपेलेटाइन फोसा टेरिगोपेलेटाइन फोसा एक पेपर लाना है इज लाइक अ क्रॉस रोड्स ओपन कैविटी विथ लॉर्ड्स ऑफ कनेक्शन टू द सराउंडिंग कैविटीज है ना सो नाउ वी हैव टू सी वेर इट इज गोइंग If you leave any small bit of tumor in any of the canal or cavity, it is going to come back. That's the reason for recurrence. Now, this sphenopalatine foramen, uh, pterygopalatine fossa is like this. It is connected above through the inferior orbital fissure to the orbital apex, laterally through the pterygomaxillary fissure to the infratemporal fossa, the inferior orbital fissure. Infinitely through the greater palatine canal to the oral cavity. Posteriorly, now see in this direction. I will show you the sagittal section. Posteriorly, it is connected to the median canal to the middle canal fossa. Hmm? So it can go through all these areas anywhere. Now see the axial where it is going. Now it is from going from below upwards. The palate, palate, palate. Palate, palate, maxillary sinus appearing because maxillary sinus in the adult goes below the level of the hard palate. So you see the maxillary sinus. Now see in the nasopharynx. See this tumor is there in the nasopharynx. So it is coming down in the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx. This nasopharynx. This nasopharyngeal component coming in the no. posterior part of the nasal. This is the anterior extension of the tumor, pushing the septum little bit because of the tumor mass. Now. This is the pterygoid process and the medial and lateral pterygoid plate. Here is this is the medial pterygoid muscles. This is medial pterygoid muscle. From here it is going down to the ramus of the mandible. Hmm? Okay. This is the reason of the eustachian tube. Okay. Now coming up again, see the pterygoid process intact. This tumor is limited in the nasopharynx. Here is the carotid artery. See this? Hmm. Both carotids. Hmm. This is the jugular. This is parapharyngeal space. The next case has a parapharyngeal extension. This is the jugular vein, and this is carotid artery, and this is the pterygoid process. 
Now, there is no tumor behind the pterygoid process. That's the beauty in this case. That's a simple case, I would call it. And in this, this is the infratemporal fossa complete. And behind this, this uh, relatively black space is what? Pterygopalatine, uh, parapharyngeal fat. Okay, black space. Black space. The next case is going like this up to the carotid artery. It is extending like this. The next case. Not going anteriorly anywhere. So here it is going here. Now see up. Going up. This tumor is going in the pterygopalatine fossa. See, it's limited here, not going in the infrared. Normal fossa? Yeah, normal. Oh, yeah, normal. Eh? And this is infratemporal fossa. It's not going in the infratemporal fossa anywhere. Now see the better picture of the axial. This is the better picture of the axial. Now, this is coming from uh, upside down. This is the infratemporal uh, fossa component. Sir, either the pterygopeltine fossa, dekho. Either ka wider. This is Holman Miller sign pushing the posterior wall of the maxilla anterior. See this maxillary sign is here, up to here, and it is here, pushed anterior. Now, from here, it is not going in the infratemporal fossa. We can see now going below. You see the pterygoid process intact. So we know the lateral extension not going in the pterygomaxillary fissure. Clear? Now. We have other views, that is sagittal view, to see the other extension. Now see this. Sagittal view. 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 This is the sphenoid bone. This is your pterygopalatine fossa. This is your pterygopalatine. Okay. It is connected. This is the greater palatine canal. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. This is greater palatine canal. No tumor going in the greater palatine canal. Otherwise, it would have been widened. This is a very small canal going this. Now, this is the tumor. Complete tumor. It's not going in the sphenoid. Not going in the post treatment. Yeah, post treatment. Yeah. ये फिर से बताना ये हम कहाँ थे नोस में समझूं ये maxillary signs का है। हाँ। तो ये medial cavity में आ रहे हैं। हाँ। ये भी तरीकों पे greater palate नहीं करना। ठीक है। ठीक है ना? Now see, this is the orbit. Hmm? This is the tumor in the तरीकों पे लेता है फोसा। This is inferior orbital fissure. It's completely blocked. There is no tumor into it. Otherwise, it would have been widened. यहाँ से दिखता ट्यूमर इन द ऑर्बिट ऑर्बिटल अपेक्स इन द सी दिस इस ऑर्बिट फ्रॉम एंटीरियर टू पोस्टीरियर दिस द ऑर्बिटल अपेक्स दिस द टेरिगोपेल्टाइन फोसा व्हिच इस कनेक्टेड टू द इंफ्रीयर ऑर्बिटल फिशर इनटू द ऑर्बिटल अपेक्स सो दिस इस कंपलीटली ब्लॉक अगर ये ऊपर जाए भी तो सिर्फ पुश करता है इरोड नहीं करता चलो � or anywhere, the strategy is going to be same. Pull the tumor, go behind it with the periosteum elevator and pull it out. Just gently pull it out. Everywhere it is going. It's going intracranial, you have to just pull it out. Cavernous, pull it out. Stick to the periosteum. The next case, in the parapharyngeal space onto the carotid artery. You just have to pull it out, go behind with the periosteum and pull it out. Every In the pterygopalatine fossa, go lateral to it. Catch the tumor and with the periosteum pull it out. Embolization can be Never. Catch the root. See, the, I will give you reasons to not to get embolized. Number one, embolization can be done only to the external carotid system. Internal carotid is highly hazardous. Hmm? It can go anywhere and get give nerve palsies or any other infarction, anything. In the external carotid system, this tumor is almost always only supplied by the uh, time. Embolization क्या करें आप उस वेसल को ब्लॉक कर रहे हो यू कैन गो डायरेक्टली एंड क्लेम द वेसल दैट्स इट इन अन इनफ्रीक्वेंट सिचुएशन दिस ट्यूमर कैन गेट सप्लाई फ्रॉम द असेंडिंग फरिंजल ब्रांचेस असेंडिंग फरिंजल आर्टर दैट टू ओनली व्हेन इट एक्सटेंड्स इनटू द पैराफरिंजल स्पेस इन दैट सिचुएशन यू पुल द ट्यूमर इन केस द असेंडिंग फरिंजल आर्टर ओपन्स अप वी जस्ट कॉग्नेट इट तो जैसे अगले में हो सकता है कि ऐसा Anyway, now this taste the supply from wherever it gets attached to the periosteum. 
you have to dissect in the sub periosteal plane so that the tumor remains intact say, not it can take supply if it is attached to the septum it can take supply from there it can take supply from the opposite external carotid system so there you go in the sub periosteal plane by the cautery and remove it is never stuck to the periosteum it's yeah, it touching the it can no, not to the septal cartilage to the periosteum so i want to ask you there is yes is that the tumor only um, does not invade or infiltrate the bones it only pushes the bones not so bones does infiltrate in the cavities no does it infiltrate bone it can erode by means of pressure pressure yes it can so erode the pterygoid process it's it going in deep deep small crevices what does that mean you have to drill it out so you are saying it is just pushing but then again you are saying yeah. it is eroding if it the is in the bone like yeah, pterygoid pressure process pressure yeah. eroding if it is eroding the pterygoid process you have to drill out the bone it is pressure erosion yeah, not it can, growing it can into the extend bone. into the haversian canals of the bone canal so you have to drill it out like median canal if it goes in the median canal just open up the median canal widen it drill it out and remove the tumor from it you must any tumor extending into the pterygopeltine fossa you must see the median canal there's a common site of recurrence it is in the literature it's proven we have seen many a time like in this case going in the pterygopeltine fossa we must look into the pterygoid canal median canal and see we'll see the median now if it gets vascular supply from internal carotid artery you just you have to coagulate yeah it can get twigs from internal carotid in the median canal also the median Very artery in the median it. canal is, is not lateral. always from the external carotid it can be from the internal system lateral lateral carotid yes so you just have to copy it okay so to access laterally you will have to remove the medial wall of the maxilla okay hello madam medial wall posterior